Meet Hetty Green, America's cheapest woman ever. Despite her outstanding wealth, she still lived a super cheap life to the point that she wore the same pair of clothes and undergarments over and over again until they were no longer wearable. What made her do so? Let's find out her story in today's video. Hetty's name is Henrietta Helen Robinson. She was born in New Bedford, Massachusetts on November 21, 1834, to the city's wealthiest whaling family. Her parents, Abby Howland and Edward Mott Robinson, owned a large fleet of whaling vessels and amassed wealth through a flourishing U.S.-China trade. It's worth pointing out that only select people and businesses could engage in a lucrative trade route because of government restrictions. Hattie spent her youngest years in the company of her aunt Sylvia and Gideon Howland, her grandfather, was another successful whaling agent. Her grandfather would teach the prodigy about business methods, including reading commerce reports, trade commodities, ledgers, and stock quotations by age six. She once told Dorothy Dix, a highly acclaimed American journalist, that her family taught Hetty how to look after her property at age six. Raised as a strict Quaker, Hetty learned to live with frugality and austerity. At the young age of eight, Hetty opened her first bank account using savings from her allowances. By age 13, Hetty was the bookkeeper of her family and accompanied her father to meetings with stockbrokers, commodities traders, storeroom keepers, and counting house managers. When her mother died in 1860, Hetty received an $8,000 house, worth nearly a quarter of a million dollars today. On the other hand, Hetty's father inherited $100,000 and combined it with his shares in the family whaling business to invest in the William Tell Coleman New York shipping firm. He also invested in government bonds, earning 6% in gold. At the time, the United States was rebuilding after several years of strife and gloom from the American Civil War. Edward made good use of his business prowess to leverage the many business opportunities. Hetty's father died in 1865 and left Hetty $6 million, or about $106 million today. Her aunt Sylvia also died not long after, leaving Hetty about $1 million or roughly $18 million in today's currency. She would receive hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash after several years of protracted legal battles related to her aunt's will, making Hetty one of the nation's richest people at the time. Although it is safe to assume that Hetty's family's vast wealth would lead her to an extravagant lifestyle, the opposite is true. Frugality runs deep in Hetty's mind at a young age, and Hetty's desire to carve her destiny is evident in her marriage. Hetty met Edward Henry Green in 1860 while shuffling from New Bedford to New York to be with her father. Green was a Boston millionaire and a partner for the Boston-based merchant company Russell Sturgis & Company, also plying the U.S.-China trade route. Before agreeing to marry Green in 1867, Hetty made Green renounce all his rights to her estate and money. The couple relocated to London in the late 1860s, where Hetty gave birth to Edward in 1868 and Harriet Sylvia Anne in 1871. Although their marriage only lasted 18 years, Hetty and Edward Green remained cordial despite leading separate lives. However, they never dissolved their marriage. The cause of their parting was Edward's financial woes upon their return to the U.S. in 1873. Edward suffered heavy financial losses on Wall Street, with Hetty bailing him out in 1875. The last straw was the collapse of John J. Sisko & Son, a financial house, in 1885. Hetty's husband owed the bank $700,000, which the bank required repayment before she could transfer $26 million worth of mortgages, stocks, deeds, and bonds to the Chemical National Bond. Hetty paid off her husband's debt, but never forgave him for it, fueling their separation as a married couple. Not only was Hetty wealthy because of her inheritance, but she was also rich due to her peculiar investment strategies on Wall Street. Historians refer to the Gilded Age as that period in American history between the 1870s and the 1900s. It was a time of immense change and great conflict between brand new systems and old-fashioned ways. The Gilded Age connected peoples and countries worldwide with advances in railway systems, telephone and telegraph technologies, and electricity. It saw the rise of American industrialists and business people redefining the new aristocracy. Unfortunately, it also widened the gap between the rich and the poor with the latter living in appalling conditions. With massive wealth creation came the challenge of centralizing all financial activities to one hub. And that hub is Wall Street. As the nation's financial center, Wall Street attracted many investors, including J.P. Morgan, Charles Dow, John D. Rockefeller, General Electric, and the American Tobacco Company. Hetty Green would include her name in the growing list of preeminent Wall Street investors by the mid-1970s. 
Unlike many Wall Street investors during the Gilded Age, Hetty's approach to making money was contrarian. She would always buy things at ultra-low prices when nobody wants them. She sets a target price and sells her investments when people go crazy over them. People think Hetty's strategy is to buy and hold, but she is more focused on value investing. She once said that everything has a price, and when the price presents itself, she sells. Hetty invested the interest she earned annually from her father's trust fund in Civil War bonds. She made a $1.1 million profit in her first year alone, earning a daily average of $200,000 in the succeeding years. If not investing in government bonds, Hetty would put her money in mortgage bonds or railroad stocks. Her investment philosophy involves learning everything she can about the investment before plunging. She also has the mindset of reflecting on a deal at least overnight before closing a bargain. Hetty believed that women should understand how bank accounts work, how interest accumulates to grow its value, and the composition of bonds and mortgages. Hetty was so proficient in her investment strategy and wealth creation that she rescued New York City from the Panic of 1907 by loaning the city government $1.1 million. The government repaid her in short-term revenue bonds, further growing her wealth. Unsurprisingly, Wall Street executives and traders called her the Queen of Wall Street. Unfortunately, her husband's death in 1902 prompted Hetty to wear black mourning clothes. Hetty was never known for dressing in expensive and flashy clothes, and she never rented an office, preferring to conduct business at the Seaboard National Bank. Her shabby appearance and black mourning dress earned Hetty the nickname the Witch of Wall Street. Despite Hetty having a value worth $2 to $5 billion in today's currency, she was a legendary skinflint. Despite owning several real estate holdings in Boston, New York, Street Louise, and Chicago, Hetty prefers renting cheap apartments. She doesn't use hot water or turn on the heater. She wore the same clothes and underwear until they were no longer wearable. There is also a story about Hetty's legendary frugality, having her laundress wash only her dress's dirtiest parts to save money on detergents. She was fond of pies but would only buy them if they didn't cost more than 15 cents. If she needed medical attention, Hetty would put on her shabbiest clothing and visit a free clinic, often using a fictitious name to avoid the fees. One legend claims Hetty purposely didn't seek medical attention for her son's sledding accident-related injuries. However, Hetty's son, Edward, later clarified that doctors had to amputate his legs only when he was already an adult and that his sledding accident required no treatment when he was still seven. Hetty is also notorious for haggling with food servers over the restaurant menu before ordering inexpensive food. Unsurprisingly, Hetty would instead carry dry oatmeal packs, allowing her instant and cheap sustenance. Hetty Green was wealthy, that she chose to lead a frugal life, almost to the point of society calling her a pauper. Hetty's frugality and austerity persisted throughout her remaining years. Before her daughter married Matthew Astor Wilkes, she had the young man sign a prenuptial agreement that guaranteed Wilkes would not run after her wife's fortune. She continued living in shabby homes and moved to New Jersey to avoid paying New York's property taxes. Hetty Green finally bade farewell to the world on the 3rd of July 1916 due to apoplexy, the equivalent of the modern-day stroke. The richest woman in America and Wizard of Finance was laid to rest next to her husband at the Emanuel Episcopal Church's Emanuel Cemetery in Bellows Falls, Vermont. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe for more content like this.